this is the heading. I'm going to ask you to put a secondary heading on this because um, this is a very functional way of describing what we're going to be looking at today. But um, traditionally, uh, historically, this is not at all what it's been called. Good morning. Um, these are called, and I'm not, I know you're going to try pronouncing this one because I haven't, unlike, um, unlike the Marvis theorem, I haven't done the research to know that I'm going to be saying this right. So. <laughs> This is a French mathematician who, who worked out these results that I'm going to show you. Um, and that's what, like, this is a really beautiful result that we're going to look at, okay? It's all about the relationship between the roots of a polynomial and the coefficients that it has. Now, you already know what some of these are. Let's just rehearse. For a quadratic, right? We can state any, uh, any quadratic polynomial as like with general coefficients in general form, right? So if I have ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, okay? Out of this, I can make a statement if I say the roots are alpha and beta because it's a quadratic, so it should have two roots. I can make a statement about what happens when I add those roots and what happens when I multiply those roots, right? Now, if you recall how we got this relationship, what we said was, look, if I've got a quadratic like this, and you don't need to rehearse this, I'm just going to do it quickly on the side, and we're going to do it for um, a cubic and a quartic. If you have a go at something like this, and you say, look, this quadratic, it ought to have two roots, right? It ought to have two roots. I should be able to say that I could rewrite this, not say it's equal to something, but actually say it's identical to a quadratic that looks like this. Oops, not enough space. Okay? It's got two roots, alpha and beta. And I can't just say x minus alpha, x minus beta and say that's the factorization because I don't know whether it's monic or not. A could be 1 or 2 or negative 100 or anything. Okay? So that's why it's a tap of fruit. Okay? Now what I would do here, just like we did with, in so many places, right? Because we're approaching the one object from two points of view. Okay? I'd expand the right hand side and then I'd have some x squared terms, some x's and a constant. Just like I have here. And since these things are identical, I would equate them. I'd compare coefficients and then I get a result out. Now let's just rehearse. What is that result? What is the sum of the roots of a quadratic? Minus, Minus B and A. Very good. Right? There's the sum of roots. And in the same way, once you rehearse that process, you get the product of the roots, alpha times beta, which is C just C on A, right? So uh, a couple of things have happened. Number one, the coefficient has changed. And also, it's gone from negative to positive. No big deal, okay? Sum and product of roots. Now, as it turns out, sum and product are actually not a very appropriate name, as you will see as we now generalize this result, okay? So now, rather than just a quadratic, we're going to have a look at a cubic. And this time, we are going to fully rehearse this result rather than just say, hey, do you remember this? We're actually going to go through the lines, okay? So I'm going to say, I'm going to start with <coughs> a general cubic, right? Again, I'm going to name the, the leading coefficient A. So I've got ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Okay. Now what I want to know is something about the roots of this cubic and how many roots should it have? Three. It should have three, just like a quadratic has two. Um, there should be three roots, and I want to know how they relate to each of these coefficients. Okay. So my method is going to be, just like over there, I'm going to say, look, this thing here should be equivalent to something which has three roots. I want it completely factorized out, right? So I have that A at the front because it's not necessarily monic. And then if there are three roots, I'm going to call them alpha, beta, and gamma, okay? In case you're um, wondering, gamma, I'll draw a nice big gamma over here. This is the way I draw gammas, okay? Um, kind of like a... Uh, how would you describe it? It's like a ribbon. You know those ribbons that you buy, the fundraising ribbons? It's like a ribbon with a with a tail on it, okay? Or a hat, whatever it is. Okay? So here's my factorization. Now I'm gonna take this, I'm just gonna expand the lot. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a second. <coughs> Excuse me. You're gonna get a whole bunch of terms out of this, okay? Get all the terms out, just one by one. It might take you a couple of lines, but the important thing that I want you to get is can you gather the x cubed terms? Can you gather the x squared terms? Can you gather the um, etc. Okay. Um, now, just to make things one step easier for you before you begin your expansion, okay? 
before I expand, can you see everything here on the right is going to have an A on it, right? Like every single thing is going to have an A because there's an A out the front, okay? So rather than do that, I'm just going to take the A out of play, right? I'm going to divide both sides by A. It's just the number. It's a non-zero number because it's, it's a cubic. If A was zero, I'd have a quadratic, okay? So if I divide everything, I should get x cubed plus this number of x squared plus this number of x's plus this constant, okay? So I've divided that all by A, which just leaves me with this, which is no easier to expand, but there just won't be so many A's flying around, okay? So now you've got the right-hand side, go ahead and expand it and collect the like terms. Okay, off we go. I'm one step short, okay? You can see what I've done is I've, I've actually just expanded everything out, but I've, I've put them into groups. I just haven't quite factorized yet, right? Um, I'm pointing this out just so that you know one of the tricky things here is just making sure you've got everything. Just making sure you haven't missed any terms. You're gonna have three x squared terms. Now just before I, you know, actually factorize this, how do I know I had to have three x squared terms? Like I knew I had to have three of them, okay? Have a look at how you get an x squared out of this, right? In what way could I get an x squared? And the answer is, you have to take these two, which leaves you with, well, don't, don't pick an x here because then you won't get an x squared. You'll get an x cubed, right? You've got to take these two, then you've got to take these two, and then you've got to take those two, right? In other words, out of three objects, you are trying to choose two of them, right? In other words, thinking back to your binomial that you learned way at the start of the year, there were three, choose two of those, right? Which if you want to go back to uh, your Pascal's triangle, right? Three, choose two is going to be, well, there's three, choose not, three, choose one, three, choose two, okay? So that's how I knew there were going to be three, and your calculator can check that, okay? Um, that'll be more useful when we go to four in a minute. So I also knew there were going to be three of these. In fact, you can see the one, three, three, one that Pascal's triangle expected us to get, oh. okay? Do, do you see it? Okay. So, all right, now I'm ready to factorize. So I'm going to, in order to make sure I can compare the coefficients, I need the actual coefficients just sitting out the front. I notice there's an x cubed on both sides, but that tells me nothing about the coefficients on the roots and how they're related to each other. So I'm just gonna get rid of both of them. Do you see that? It doesn't add any useful information to me. I've got an x cubed on both sides, but whatever, okay? Now see where the action happens, right? How many x squareds do I have? I'm gonna take out that minus sign because they all have a minus on them and I get alpha plus beta plus gamma, right? That's how many x squareds there are. In the same way, I've got all of these guys take out my factor of x, bless you. Now, these guys, what do you call them? Um, you cannot really call them the sum of roots because it's not alpha plus beta plus gamma, but you also can't call them the product of roots because it's not alpha times. Okay, so, so what you call these is, um, and if I write the last one here, you can see there's a pattern that I can name these that will be consistent, is that this is the sum of the, of the roots, but it's the sum one at a time. Just one root, then the other one, then the other one. This one is still a sum. It's something plus something plus something, but they're not one at a time. They're two at a time. You see them? They're all paired up, okay? This is also a sum, but there just happens to be only one object there, right? It's the sum three at a time, okay? so. The sum one at a time, sum two at a time, sum three at a time, those are the coefficients that I'm actually getting and I can compare over there, right? So therefore, and here come the first of, or the, rather the second, because we're already at the first up here. Here come the second of um, Yate's results, right? He takes the coefficients and compares them. The first one is here, I'm going to put, I've, I've done the colors, you can see, again, but this makes it a little more obvious. You've got minus alpha plus beta plus gamma, equals B on A. So I'm going to put the minus sign on the other side as is traditionally done, right? So there's the sum of roots and that minus sign pops on the other side as you should expect based on this, right? Interesting. No matter how many roots there are, no matter what degree your polynomial is, if you add up all of the roots, you'll always get this result, right? Um, the next one is two at a time. So you go <coughs> alpha, beta, beta, gamma, Alpha, gamma, that's just here, and here there's no change of sign required, okay? So that's C on A, and then lastly, so the sum three at a time, yeah? Is it minus B on A all the time because on Pascal's triangle, like, you always have no, never mind. 
You're not that far off. You're not that far. <laughs> when we look to four, you'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, let me write down this last one for the cubic. Okay. So this is going to be again the sign. It switches, right? So you're getting minus d on a. And these are Viotta's results for the cubic equation. Okay. So again, you can see just like we observed here, like it's actually the same numbers. It's the same numbers, and they're also alternating in sign. Okay. 